Hey guys and welcome to this brand new video. This is another part of the savings series and today we'll compare another two REITs. One of them is Equinix and the other one is Digital Realty Trust. Let's go straight ahead. Let's start with Equinix. Equinix has multiple key priorities. Um, return of capital, strategic acquisition and organic investments. Okay, but from those we don't know what Equinix does. Equinix is a server re a digital uh, data center read. That's the reason why I have the background. Basically, what they do is they rent out a place, a house, or whatever you want to call it, where you can put in a server, and then uh, companies like Microsoft or AWS or whoever they then well use that storage and those servers to power, let's say, Azure or AWS or Netflix uses them. To, to somewhere host or to somewhere process the request if I want to watch a movie. And here we can see they have, they're in six continents and 32 countries and 71 metropolitan areas and they have 250 data centers around the world. And here we can see, as I mentioned earlier, so for example, the market share for Oracle is 53%, Google Cloud 42%, AWS 41% and Azure 44%. Basically without Equinix, those companies would be unable to, well, operate all of those networks or all of these cloud services. That, that's probably the better word. And that thing is pretty profitable. Here we can see over the time, they grew by quite a lot. And, well, revenue grew from 2.2 2 billion to roughly 8 billion in 10 years. So that's quite impressive. Also, FFO increased a lot. The adjusted EBITDA margin increased a bit in recent times, but overall it is quite high. And what is very important with Equinix, they're the only company in the S&P 500 that posted quarter on quarter revenue growth for 80 consecutive quarters. And as we can see here in the top, 2010 is 22 years of consecutive annual revenue growth. And that is ridiculous. Now, let's take a look at the capital structure. The capital structure looks like they have to pay a certain amount or refinance, not necessarily pay, but refinance a certain amount of debt in the coming future. And they have a net leverage ratio of 3.6. I don't quite know how they calculate it. So let's put that in brackets. Brackets equal? I think brackets. But overall, it looks as if we don't have to worry about that much in, 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 re, uh, in, in the foreseeable future. Sure, to refinance those loans or notes it's going to be more expensive but well that's the way it is rising interest makes everything more expensive here we have the financial guidance and i think overall that looks pretty amazing especially guys take it consider that they have a ffo per share diluted of 31 dollars 31 and a half dollars and we'll see that they're only paying out 13.6 dollars so that's pretty amazing. If you want to know why FFO and AFFO is so important overall, check out that video here. Since we are already on the overview, we can see they have a market cap of 72 billion and a price to FFO ratio of 35, which is pretty high. Let's take a look at the chart for the long term. And I think that looks pretty, pretty amazing. But guys, we have to keep something in mind if we take a look. Now you already saw which one is the next one. Um, if we take a look at the long-term chart of Equinix, and I go to all time, um, at the beginning of the 2000s with the dot-com bubble, they had a very tough time. Uh, well, not necessarily a tough time, but the stock decreased a lot from, what was it, 500 to 10, so a lot. With that said, let's go to the next one, which is Digital Realty Trust. Well, it should have appeared here, but that PowerPoint slide didn't work out, it looks like. But at least that works, and I find that super fancy. So basically the same story. They have equity market cap of $29 billion, and the price value of $48 billion, the eighth largest publicly traded US REIT. Yay. I think Equinix is the third largest in the US. Prologue is the largest in American Tower and then Equinix. Here we can see they are all over the world, just as Equinix is. Here we can see they acquire a lot of companies and also with Equinix, we saw that earlier. Acquisitions is a very important way of growing in that area. 
Um, yeah, so expect a lot of not a lot, but expect that over over the time those companies will acquire more and more companies. Um, yes. Here we can see something which is rather interesting. Their net debt to adjusted EBITDA ratio is at 7.1, which is pretty, pretty high. But the capital structure looks like as if the debt is only 75, 37%. Uh, Yet a net debt to adjusted EBITDA ratio of 7.1 is high. Here we can see another quite lovely thing. I wanted to show you something on that slide. The dividend growth um is 10 percent combined annual growth rate from 2005 to 2020 with a yield now of five percent we'll check that later but if you go on seeking alpha and take a look at the last 10 years the growth rate has only been five percent because from 29 2009 he had that jump that's been a massive jump and that jump is responsible for that growth rate so don't get don't let yourself get fooled by these numbers. Check them. Now, before we compare the two, let's just take a quick look at Digital Realty Trust. So, Digital Realty Trust has a market cap of 37 billion, dividend yield of 4%, price to earnings ratio, price, price to FFO ratio of just 18. So, that looks significantly better. If we take a look at DLR here, uh, no, uh, better in the way of cheaper. Um, if we take a look here at the long term chart, and then go to not necessarily three months, but one month is already a, that looks pretty solid. On the other side, if we compare it to the uh, chart of where do I have these lines? If we compare it to the chart of Equinix, um, we would need to compare the same time span. So from the beginning of 2005 to now, it's 10 bigger. And if we take a look at Equinix from the beginning of 2005, which is somewhere here. Oh, oh, yeah, somewhere here. Am I dumb? Yes, I am. Well, it's almost a 20 bagger, so that turned out significantly better for Equinix. And if you bought down here, that would be, oh, at $3. If you bought at $3, that would be a 200 200 At $900, it would be 300 bagger. So, there's a way to get very, very rich, by the way. <laughs> now let's compare the two. And we start with net debt to EBTR with Equinix is at 5.6 and the digital Realty Trust is at 7.1 the AFFO. So Equinix wins in that category. AFFO payout ratio is just more or less half at Equinix than with the digital Realty Trust, which has something to do with the fact that, uh, and that's also why in the next category, digital Realty Trust had such a, large or higher dividend yield at 4%. Um, if we doubled the AFFO payout ratio at Equinix, we would not get to 4%. So I don't know how to give that a value. Um, dividend growth is significantly better at Equinix and the F price to FFO ratio is way better at Digital 2 Realty Trust. So it looks as if Equinix wins. And in the first place, it does look like, and Equinix does win overall, but there's one thing I would like to show you, which is very important to keep in mind. If we take a look at these companies and then start, for example, with Digital Realty Trust, take a look at the amount of shares, how that increases over time. From 2013, from 128 million to 300. So instead of decreasing the share amount, the share amount increases a lot and a lot. And if we go to Equinix, it's pretty much the same story, although it's not as intense as with Data Realty Trust, but almost twice as many shares. So we heavily get diluted as shareholders. But overall, I personally think Equinix is the better company. Although I own 7.4% share, 7.4 shares of Digital to Realty Trust, I own three shares of Equinix. But for my savings series, for my savings, um, yeah, how to get rich videos, you know, the series, guys, if you don't know it, check it out up here. Um, I'll go with Equinix. Are you a shareholder of the two companies? Let me know in the comments. And with that said, see you soon, guys. Bye.